Hello. So, the Council has uh, had consultation this morning uh, on, um, uh, sorry, I got the wrong document here, on uh, starting on uh, um, the sit situation in Lebanon, that's a report from the uh, 1701 resolution. We had a briefing on the situation in Lebanon and developments related to resolution 1701 by UNIFIL and by acting uh, 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 special coordinator, uh, Panile Cardel, uh, and Under Secretary General Jean Pierre Lacroix. The members of the Security Council expressed support to the activities of UNSCOL and UNIFIL in carrying out their mandate. The members of the Security Council expressed their hope that a new government of national unity will be formed swiftly in Lebanon and look forward to the upcoming mandate renewal of UNIFIL. And the members of the Security Council expressed their commitment to follow closely the situation in Lebanon, in, including the implementation of Resolution 1701. Now, we've also uh, have received an update from the Ambassador of Ethiopia on the latest developments in the relations between Ethiopia and Eritrea. I think everyone agrees that what is going on between Ethiopia and Eritrea is an historic and very significant development with far-reaching positive consequences, potentially for the Horn of Africa and beyond. We have welcomed the commitment of Eritrea and Ethiopia to jointly endeavor to ensure regional peace, development, and cooperation. You will be aware uh, also of the letter of, the, of, of Djibouti to the Secretary General that has been uh, conveyed to the Security Council um, uh, and uh, subsequently the Secretary General's uh, willingness to offer his good offices uh, in uh, trying to resolve the issue that is outstanding between uh, Djibouti and Eritrea. Um, as par per our statement of 10th of July by the Security Council, members have commended the signing of the Joint Declaration of Peace and Friendship by President Isaiah Sefwerki and Prime Minister Abi Ahmed. And finally, I just want to say that everyone encourages actors to offer their support to the peace process and that we all stand ready to support Eritrea and Ethiopia in their implementation of the Joint Declaration. And there's also, I would, I would say, a very positive uh, approach taken to the uh, offer of the Secretary General to offer his, his good offices when it comes to the uh, Djibouti and Eritrean issue. So I think that is what I could uh, and wanted to communicate to you on behalf of the, and after the meetings we've had. Yes, please about uh, Lebanon, uh, we saw that there was uh, the annex with the report on uh, 1701 that uh, uh, touched on uh, the restriction of movements in UNIFIL area. Uh, so uh, did uh, the council members discuss uh, these restrictions, this situation on the ground, especially uh, what's related to uh, the NGO that's called Green Without Borders? Yeah. Yes, uh, there, there was a, a, a very detailed and full briefing by the um, uh, Under Secretary General of Peacekeeping Operations as to the activities uh, under the mandate of UNIFIL. And the issues that you just mentioned were, of course, addressed as they are in the Secretary General's report. Is there any more detail on this uh, council members' uh, reactions on this? Thing? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't want to say that. I mean, now we we, we were. We want to look at um, the discussion we're going to have in August as we renew the mandate of, of UNIFIL, and then that is when I think uh, those aspects will be touched upon next. Please. Is there any um, a concern among council members or yourself about the, the rise in tensions between the Iran and the United States about threats to international peace and the Iran nuclear deal? Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't discussed that today, but I, I said to some of you before in the meeting that, of course, any, any escalation, rhetorically or otherwise, in that region is, uh, is something that would be of concern. Uh, the region needs the complete opposite, which is de-escalation and uh, confidence building. Is your sense that Council will continue to support the deal? The Council will support, will support the deal? The deal? Well, you are aware that uh, some uh, one Council member has moved away from, from, from the deal, if you refer to the, the nuclear deal. So, of course, that, that, uh, that makes it a bit difficult for the Council to express itself. But uh, the great majority of uh, Council members and certainly members of the United Nations are fully in behind the deal that has been struck between, uh, between us and, and Iran. Thank you. Uh, uh, I want to ask about Syria, but will be any meeting about Iran 
anytime soon at the security Well, there is a big debate tomorrow uh, uh, on uh, the Middle East, um, and um, uh, which usually focuses on the peace process, but I wouldn't exclude that uh, that, uh, that uh, some of the aspects that you've just asked me about will be addressed also there. Uh, Ambassador, on Syria, um, uh, what do you expect from the meeting this week from uh, Mr. Di Mastura, the expectation of the council members? And also, uh, in the uh, uh, Mr. Pompeo's visit, um, was there any discussion about Syria? Do you feel any impact of the Trump-Putin summit on the U.S. approach to what's going on in Syria? The, the meeting that we're having with Staffan de Mistura is on the political process, and I think uh, what he will brief about is uh, the preparations uh, ahead of the Sochi uh, meeting uh, uh, the week after. Um, and then, uh, no, there was no discussion with Secretary Pompeo on, on Syria. It was focused on the DPRK issue, which, which he came here to brief about. Sorry, just one more question, and then we need to move forward. <laughs> um, Mr. Ambassador, on going back to Ethiopia and Eritrea yeah. and Djibouti, uh, what's the status of the discussions about uh, sanctions, mm -hmm. about continuing sanctions? Um, are you, is the Council going to wait for mediation by the Secretary General in the Djibouti-Eritrea um, conflict? Well, um, we're having that discussion right now. Sanctions is, of course, one part of the whole, uh, uh, the whole equation. Um, uh, I think, uh, so that discussion has just started, if you like, the last few days, including today. Um, the, but the broader issue is really how the Security Council can uh, support the trend that we're seeing now, which includes breaking the isolation of some countries and, and ensure that whatever we do is, is a an encouragement, uh, an acknowledgement of what has happened as something quite extraordinarily, extraordinary, and an encouragement to ensure that that process continues and that it leads to, uh, you know, to release the potential of other uh, issues in the region. So exactly how the sanctions against Eritrea plays into that, we'll see. But certainly Sweden is in favour of moving swiftly on all these uh, all, on all these agendas. One more question. On uh, Lebanon again, uh, about the mandate and oh, 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 on, on on Lebanon yeah. and the mandate and the renewal in the next month. Do you expect a technical uh, a renewal for one year or do you expect change in the mission? Um, I, I, I'm not sure, but I, I don't think we will see any, any major changes to, to the mandate there. But the briefing today was a little bit just to ensure that everyone understands exactly what UNIFIL is doing right now. So it was quite detailed uh, uh, on that. And I think that would be helpful to find unity around the renewal of the, um, of the mandate uh, in August. Thank you very much. Thank you.